Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't know if we were going to need to call us in for a second of eventually. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I call this meeting to order. I'm going to ask Mr. Clare to come up and say our invocation and our Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody, please stand, please. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the uh, freedoms that we have, uh, for the blessing it is to be here. We thank you for the parents who have come out uh, and the concerns that they have for the children. We thank you for the educators, the administrators, school board members, and all who work so hard to provide a quality education. Lord, we pray that you'd bless this meeting, give guidance and wisdom to all that are uh, going to speak and to participate. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of living in a free country. Lord, we continue to pray for those people in Ukraine who are in harm's way. Lord, we pray for peace in that nation and peace in the world. Lord, we thank you for the freedoms we have. We pray that in his name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Lead us in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you so much. Okay. Call this meeting to order. We have a roll call of members, Ms. Howerton, Ms. Brantley, Ms. Shoup, myself, Mr. Durrance, um, Superintendent Longshore, our board secretary, Mrs. Wilburn, and our board uh, school board attorney, Mr. McClure. So um, I'm excited to be here. The packed house, so that's a good deal. We're here at one o'clock, so we're having a long day today. So, so we're going to uh, go to B. Our character word of the day is integrity, and it's presented by Lake Placid High School. Is that going to be something we need to come down and look at, or stay up here? That's a good question. Up here. Okay. All right. That sounds great. <laughs> Good afternoon, Highlands County family and friends. My name is Mr. Burlsman. Uh, I am a dean and a U.S. history teacher at Lake Placid High School, and I also sponsor SAVE Club uh, at our school. SAVE Club stands for Students Against Violence Everywhere. It's a relatively new club. We started ours at LPHS in 2019. Um, stands for Students Against Violence Everywhere, and it stems from the Sandy Hook promise, uh, really as a measure by the loved ones that were lost by the, by the family members and friends uh, and peers at Sandy Hook Elementary School to help prevent that from ever happening again. Uh, after the uh, Parkland incident, um, basically the state of Florida brought on bringing this safe club to the state uh, in big numbers, and that's how we got our start. And our goal is basically to end violence before it starts, spread kindness, and uh, really just kind of create a positive culture that includes all of our students and make everything safe for all students, faculty, uh, and our community. So with that being said, I uh, have a couple of our members here, our president and vice president, Kaylee Brower and Iris Munez. They're going to do a presentation on a word that is very near and dear to my heart, integrity. So I'll let them take it over here. Um, so our word is integrity, and it means always doing what is right. You live in accordance to your deepest values, you're honest, and having strong moral principles. And you always do the right thing even when nobody's watching. It's important because integrity is a highly valued character trait that is found in many leaders. Integrity helps you hold yourself accountable and lead by example as a role model. So an example of integrity, we're going to read a letter about a soldier who wrote to their two sons. And a little context is it was an epic military campaign between U.S. Marines and naval forces against the Imperial Army of Japan. The battle was a major victory for the United States despite many casualties. So what does integrity look like? 
Here is a real life example from an American hero who had a great deal of integrity and did his best to pass that characteristic onto his children. On December 17, 1944, Lieutenant Leonard Isaacs penned a heartfelt Christmas letter to his two sons. He told them to help their mother around the house and how being so far away himself, that would be the best <coughs> Christmas present he could imagine. In light of the German and Japanese aggression, he preached to his little boys to never be bullies and to stand up for the smaller fellow. He also urged his sons to have courage to do the right, to do the things that you think are right. My dear <coughs> little boys, I am writing you today, just a week before Christmas Eve, in the hope that you will get this little note at Christmas time. All of this coming week will be holidays, and I can just imagine the fun you will be having especially when you know it's just a few days before Santa Claus will be coming. If it were possible, I would like to come down the chimney myself and crawl right into your stocking. Wouldn't that be a surprise? I would enjoy it even more than you, but since your dad is far away and Santa Claus has only the reindeers that will fly through the air, I'm afraid we'll have to let Santa Claus use them. After all, he has so many places to go in such a short time. I won't be able to give you a Christmas present personally this year, but I do want you to know that I think of you all the time and feel very proud of the way that you have been helping your mother while I am gone. I know that it is n only natural for young, healthy, and strong boys like you are to want to play and have fun all the time, but I do want you to think about helping mommy because it is so hard for her to do everything while I'm gone. I know that you would like to give me a Christmas present too, so I will tell you what you can do, and this will be your Christmas present to me. Every day, ask mommy if there are any errands you can go on for her, and when there are errands to run, say, sure mommy, and give her a big smile. Then during the day, go up to your room and look around. If there are toys scattered all around, or you left some of your clothes on the floor, pick them up. Also, when mommy is busy trying to clean up the house, don't leave her by herself. But ask mommy if you, if you can help take care of baby sister. If you will do these things for me, that will be the finest Christmas present that you could give me. Oh yes, and Cece, you are eating your meals like a real man now. Well, my boys, I guess you often wonder why people fight and have wars and why lots of daddies have to be away at Christmas time fighting when it could when it would be so much nicer to be at home that's a hard question to answer but you see some countries like Japan and Germany have people living in them just like people you and I know these people want to tell everybody that they can do that they can what they can do and what they can't do no one likes to be told to live how to live their life and I know that you certainly wouldn't like it if one of the boys in the neighborhood tried to tell you what church you should go to, what school you should go to, and particularly if that boy was always trying to beat up some smaller or weaker boy. You wouldn't like it, would you? And unfortunately, the only way to make a person like that stop those sort of things or a country like Japan and Germany is to fight them and beat them and teach them that being a bully, because after all, that's what they are, is not the way to live and that we can't put up with it. What does all of this mean to you? Just simply this, my boys. God doesn't want you to ever be a bully. I want you to always fight against anyone who tries to be one. I want you to always help the smaller fellow or the little boy who may not be as strong as you. I want you to always share what you have with the other fellow. And above all, my boys, have courage. Have courage to do the things that you think are right. To do these things, you need a strong body and a brave heart. Never run away from someone you may be afraid of. If you do, you will feel ashamed of yourself, and before long, you will find it easy to run away from the things that you should stand up and fight against. If you and lots of other boys try to do the same things that Dad has been talking about in this letter, it may be that people will not have to fight wars in the years to come, and then all of the daddies in the world will be home for Christmas and that is where they belong. Perhaps some of the things that I have been talking about, you don't quite understand. If you don't, mommy will explain them to you as she knows. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless you. Love, Daddy. I 
Isaacs, a New Orleans native, never got to deliver the lesson in person. He died just two months later on February 21st, 1945, after being mortally wounded when Japanese mortar fire hit his foxhole 300 yards from the beach at Iwo Jima. He left behind his wife and three children, two boys and one girl, and was buried at sea. So you see what the soldier was instilling in his children with integrity. He wanted his children to have the courage to stand up for what is right and to stand up for others and to always maintain a high sense of moral integrity. The more people that have integrity in this world, the better and safer our world will be for all. Thank you for your time and remember to always maintain, maintain integrity. integrity. Excellent job. Thank you so much. We have any school board member committee reports? Okay. So we'll go into presentations of petitions, public comments, concerns, or reports. And I'll just read the disclaimer, I guess, here. It says, uh, the school board of Highlands County welcomes you to this meeting. This is time set aside for the citizens of Highlands County to address the school board. This is not a question and answer period. The board will only receive your comments. If deemed appropriate, the board may request the superintendent to obtain additional information to address your concerns. Public comment is intended to allow members of the public a forum to express their concerns regarding the operation of the school district. It is not a forum for general political speech and related to school operations. Please come to the podium, state your name for the record, and limit your comments to no more than five minutes. So uh, we do have a stack, so we're gonna get started here. So uh, are you ready, Ms. Yeah. Madam Secretary? Hopefully. Okay, uh, we're gonna start with Mr. Dimchek, James Dimchek. Again, state your name when you get to the podium and kind of hold the microphone close. I know we're having a hard time sometimes here, and so thank you. Thank you, James Demchak, Avon Park. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Again, there's some support staff members here. As you know, the SO3 grant and the money for the support staff is still a very hot topic. I mean, you should have a copy of a handout that was, that was given to you and just to show you what's going on in the counties around you. Um, it's interesting, both the, the teacher's salary starting pay is on this sheet. We're really here to talk about the support staff. You know, it's in DeSoto, teachers and support staff, SO3, both getting $2,000. Hardy County, teachers and support staff, $2,000. Hendry County, teachers and support staff, $3,000. Highlands, teachers, $4,000. ESPs, nothing as of this date. And Glades County is still, next week we'll be going to the table to talk about SO3 money. That's just this year's money. Most of these counties have already committed that same amount or a little bit less for their a second year. Um, your ESPs are your essential school personnel. Please treat them as such. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Reverend George Miller. Greetings. My name is Reverend George Miller, and I've had the privilege to serve Emmanuel United Church of Christ for the past 12 years, and I'm also a board member at large for our local NAACP. For the past few months, it's been a real honor to attend these meetings and to watch how everything takes place. And I'm not a parent, but I care very much about our community. I care about our teachers, and I certainly care about our children. And I come here today to talk about two issues I see involving the House Bill 1557. The first I want to say is how disappointed I am in our state's elected leadership. I'm disappointed that those who are in power do not trust or seem to know our teachers here in Highlands County. Because many of our teachers were raised here. They have a deep love for their students. They have been raised with great morals and an impeccable work ethic. And thank you for all the teachers who are present. To assume that our teachers come to class with an agenda to talk about orientation or gender identity is such an absolute embarrassment. The teachers I know give of themselves tirelessly. 
They do their best, and our teachers deserve to be commended, not condemned. Second, I'm concerned about House Bill 1557 because it seems like our elected leaders have not actually thought the bill thoroughly through. Lines 21 to 22 states that HB 1557 prohibits classroom discussion about sexual orientation or gender identity. Lines 97 to 100 state that instructions of orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten to third grade. Lines 124 to 151 states that when it happens and a concern arises, this can include a parent bringing an action against the school district to obtain a judgment and a court may award damages and attorney fees. So here's the issue. The people who passed House Bill 1557 did not realize that being heterosexual is actually an orientation, and the word straight is actually an orientation, and that a biological boy saying he's a boy is a gender identity, and a biological girl saying she's a girl is a gender identity. That whole presentation we just heard about a father and wife and boys was all orientation and gender identity. So if we follow the letter of the law, it means we can't say straight. And because if we say the word straight, we have talked about orientation. Therefore, our heterosexual teachers will not be able to talk about their husband or wife or show photos of their spouses because that indicates their orientation. It means how are we going to teach history if we can't identify gender? How are you going to talk about President, White, President Washington's wife if you can't say Martha? And how are we going to talk about current events with Vice President Kamala Harris if we can't identify her as the first female VP? We cannot refer to anyone as a boy or a girl or female or a male because that is gender identity. If our teachers cannot discuss gender orientation, gender, discuss orientation or gender, does that also mean that every single book in the classroom and the library NASTA has to be gone through and any book that talks about orientation and relationships and gender identity Will that have to be removed? How can we have a book that says Jack is a boy and Jill is a girl if we can't talk about gender identity? And does that mean that we can no longer have our teachers respectfully referred to as Mr. <coughs> or Mrs. or Miss or Sir? Because those are all gender-based words. So if HB 1557 is written in such a way, that means any parent at any time can make a claim and take the school to court, and they can go through all these different steps. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you for the work you're doing. This is incredible, and I would not want to be in your position. And thank you for this time. Thank you. Next up, we have Carla Rice. Good morning. My name is Carla Rice. Um, I'm mainly here to talk about ESSER funds, but I did notice something. I haven't been here in years, and I do know that you do not have to respond when someone is up here talking. But you can. You usually don't. And I can see why, because you don't want to start arguments or contention that would take up time. But I did notice at the last meeting, which, as I say, was my first one in years, is that when we went to intermission, uh, there had been talk about a program I had never heard of called IMAD which may mean mad, but I digress. Um, but as soon as we went to intermission, Mr. Brantley made a comment on it, and he did address it. And he said, I have a fourth grade daughter. 
I think we should have a committee to investigate that. But what about all the parents who had gotten up and talked? I don't know if you should have a committee or not, but they should have been listened to and at least recognized at that moment. But I'm really here to talk about the ESSER funds. Um, according to Gallup poll research, 85% of employees are not engaged at work, or worse, are actively disengaged at work. And one of the main reasons for this, they say, is that uh, many employees feel like their boss does not respect or appreciate them. The truth is great leaders don't talk down to their employees or make them feel inferior. They make everyone that they come in contact with feel like they are the most important person in the room. Great leaders are in the construction business, not the demolition business. They build people up. It is said that your real character is revealed in how you treat those that you think can do nothing for you. In regards to the ESSER funds, teachers make more in salaries than support personnel do for many reasons, including education, level, uh, experience, and that is reflected in the salary structure. That's where you can see those differences, and rightfully so. But a higher salary doesn't make an employee of more worth. Um, it doesn't make them a better person. And this money is being given from the federal government to help us counteract the devastating effects of the global pandemic, which has hit our county very hard, too. No one has escaped it. But who needs the most economic help? Who needs the help that these funds can provide? Who suffers the most? What impact or difference will two or four thousand dollars make on an administrator making eighty thousand to one hundred and thirty one thousand dollars a year as compared to a support staff who is at poverty level making only fourteen thousand to seventeen thousand four thousand dollars two thousand dollars is life changing for them but more importantly the respect and the appreciation will be life changing for them at a time when they don't feel it. In Luke it says, I don't know if we're supposed to reference the Bible in a government meeting, but so be it. In Luke it says, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. You are given much, you are given a lot of responsibility, and a lot is required of you, as it is of us. We are equals as human beings, we are equal in love and dedication that is shown to students. And you should show that you believe that by showing fairness, equity, compassion, and the word of the month, integrity, by giving support personnel, teachers, and administrators equal consideration and equal pay. It is said no matter how educated, talented, rich, or cool you believe you are, how you treat people ultimately tells all. Integrity is everything. Are you willing to sell your integrity <coughs> for $2,000? Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Doreen Perlman. I'm Doreen Perlman from Avon Park High School. Um, I've been with the district for about 22 years. I started at elementary level as an ESC pair and in different positions. My thing is now at the high school level, when we all had to be shut down, our administrator, which was perfect at us all doing things, I am a uh, virtual lab manager. I had 144 students under me that I had to check on daily with their <coughs> um, online classes. Besides, we were all given other classes to help the teachers. Well, one of my administrators said to me that we're all a family. We treat each other like a family. Well, this thing of not giving us our share has caused almost like a divorce because you have the support staff, non-instructional, kind of feeling like we're nothing. When you have your teachers over here who are getting everything and being praised for it, we work just as hard as they do. 
and it, it's, it's really sad. And if we're not getting all our money, I'd like to know where the rest of it's going because we're entitled to that. I go to work every day. I don't call in sick as, you know, I try not to unless we do, but we're there. We see these kids. We're the ones who see them when they get off the bus if they've had a bad night. Most of us are on duty with these kids all the time. I have kids in my class who were struggling to walk across that stage, but you know what? Every day, we got this. We're gonna, I'm gonna watch you walk across that stage. I encourage. I'm not saying that not everybody does it, but you know, your, your support staff, your people in the office that all covered classes these couple years. I cover class every day. I'm, I don't, I get my lunch break and that's all I get all day because I'm covering classes. Because you know what? The kids need me. And I would like to be recognized with the rest of us that we deserve what we deserve. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up, Jean Statler. First of all, let me commend you for changing your comment card. And I appreciate that. It's now much clearer for us. <clears throat> but I'm not here to talk as a public comment. I'm here to legally petition you as a board to make some changes. According to the dictionary, the definition of petition, quote, a request to do something, most commonly to address a government, office, or public entity. End of quote. And that is what you are. I want to petition you as Board of Education for Highlands County to amend your board policy concerning your ability to allow to be to to speak at a public workshop according to your secretary the workshop is under the same guidelines as a regular board meeting where you're not allowed to talk so I have a workshop. If you're not willing to have some interaction with the parties involved concerning the subject of that workshop. The definition of a workshop, quote, a workshop is a meeting in which a group of people engage in intensive discussion and activity on a particular subject, end of quote. It is now the board policy that you can't talk. So again, I say, why have a workshop if you're not willing to discuss openly an issue? <clears throat> Let me remind you, each of you are elected by us. Therefore, technically, we are your boss, not the superintendent. You have a responsibility to report back to us what's going on. <clears throat> When you put your hand on that Bible and were sworn in, you swore to agree to what is in that book and to state and federal constitution. I understand 
that when you receive a petition that you are legally responsible to act on that petition. I know that you cannot talk to each other outside of this meeting about board issues. Therefore, I am asking that one of you be responsible enough to make a motion and a second one of you to second that motion to allow a change in the board policy that will allow during a workshop open discussion. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, not in direct response, of course, but uh, I would note that on the board agenda, we have already initiated a modification of the uh, board policy regarding public comment at workshops pursuant to the board's direction at the last meeting. And so uh, that is in process and will be completed if the board has a workshop and the public wishes to participate in it during dependency of the action. I would expect that you would exercise your discretion to allow such comment, but uh, the board has spoken on that matter, and, and uh, it is your position that you wish to receive comment, and we'll do so. Thank you. Thank you. We do listen. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, Skylar Scott. Skylar Scott and um, I couldn't hear everything you said so I hope that I'm not gonna say anything that I should already know but um, I wanted to just thank you for hearing our remarks at the last board meeting I wanted to thank you for um, agreeing to schedule the workshop um, but I just I'm not well versed in parliamentary procedure so I'm not sure how this works but I would love to have more information on what to expect out of the workshop. And we do have a growing number of parents and professionals in our community that have a vested interest in the education of our students. Um, and we want the opportunity to present at the workshop. Um, we want it to be orderly. Um, so I'm asking you all to put us on the agenda. We can pick a spokesperson or we can limit it, um, the agenda item to a, a time frame or, and to a certain number of people. So it's not like 50 people presenting, but we would like the opportunity to know that we are gonna get to share. Um, we put a lot of time and effort um, and we're well informed and we wanna make sure we have the opportunity to express our, our concerns um, for many people in the community. It's a growing number. So, all right, thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit later when superintendent's report. So, um, next up, Jesse Sapp. My name is Jesse Sapp. I think I might be jumping the gun just a little bit. I think Larry's um, card got put in before mine did. Uh, Larry's with IMAD. Um, I've spoken with Larry for probably an hour, hour and a half today about the IMAD program. I know he's gonna go into it a little bit deeper. There's a lot of concern in the community about um, the sex education program that's going on. I know you guys talked about it at the last meeting. Um, I, I think that everybody needs to get together on this. There's, there's, a whole, there's a whole lot going on on both sides, but somebody at the school board, and I asked, I asked who the person was that's in, that's in charge of the IMAD. There's somebody that's on the contract um, or the, the IMU, I guess they call it. Um, that is in charge of the IMAD program, and actually, um, they they signed off on the on the curriculum for IMAD. Uh, somebody here at the school board, I, nobody's giving me a straight answer on who that person is, um, so I couldn't ask them if they actually signed off on it or not. But um, seems to me like some of the some of the comments from the from the people in the community need to be directed towards that person as well, and then um, everybody sit down and have a conversation about the IMAD program in general and what the people want in the IMAD program, because from what I understand, the IMAD program can be changed, but if we don't, if everybody doesn't come together and figure out a way to talk about it, 
and figure out what everybody wants with the IMAD program and what can be offered through the IMAD program, then it's we're just spinning our wheels. Everybody's mad at somebody who has no who, who has no authority to change the program that they're teaching. So something has to be done, either a, a workshop or something needs to be done to bring everybody together and make sure that what the community wants to be taught to their kids as far as sex education goes is being taught to them. And I think it's it, it just it's going to take some it's going to take somebody to say, hey, we all need to sit down and talk about it. Thanks. Thank you. So I get the name right. Aisha Al Aliante. Has I got that right? I'm so sorry if I don't. Good evening. My name is Aisha Aleande. I'm a parent. I'm a parent of seven, ranging from ages seven to 26. Five of my daughters have been students of Heartland Rural Health Network programs, uh, either Go Girls or IMAD or teen panels that were produced by public health educators and prevention education um, educators throughout our county. There, there's a lot to address because even sitting here in this audience, uh, the level of information or education that is shared is, um, is false. So there was a statement about this being America. Uh, when you are sworn into office in America, you do not have to swear in on a Bible. You can swear in on a Torah, the Bhagavad Gita, a Quran, a coloring book, or any other book of the dead, any book that you see fit because of your relationship with God or whomever you deem your higher power, because this is America. I also sit on the advisory board for the I Make a Difference program. Uh, I've been an employee of Heartland Rural Health Network. I'm now the executive director of Heartland Core Wellness. And in my time here since uh, 2008, uh, being a mother of six, seven now, but six then, I found the time to attend SAC meetings at the public schools that my children attended because I was not too busy and I worked. So when my children attended Park Elementary, I made sure that I attended SAC meetings with Dr. Longshore, who was then the principal of Park Elementary, because I wanted to be involved in what was taking place with my children. I there were probably only six people at those SAC meetings, and uh, the school uh, population was a little over 500. I've attended Highlands County uh, co commissioner meetings where they addressed the budget, and I was one of only two people there. When it comes to the I Make a Difference program and the curriculum that they use to teach our children, the curriculum is put together by professionals in the public health industry. They are medical professionals who have gone to medical school for four years, have done a residency, and then gone and practiced in that field. There are also people that have public, that have PhDs in those professions with a public health background. When this curriculum was introduced to our community, a member of advi uh, advisory, uh, the advisory members got together and looked through the curriculum together. Parents, teachers, our superintendent. Did, are you making a comment or do you have a question? Oh. Who was that? Since you <laughs> I can let, give you a date. Let's, let's, yeah. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Yes. Your comments are comments. We're not going to get involved in this kind of stuff. Go ahead. Please. Thank you. I appreciate that, but I don't mind. I know, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here to just share that 
the curriculum was evidence-based. And what happened, I, I guess, two weeks ago uh, was slander and defamation of character and a program where people were allowed to share not only lies, but misinformation about a program that is in schools where teachers are present. You have to have a teacher present in every classroom where the program is facilitated. That is a fact. I don't know what my time is. So thank you, 14 seconds. In short, I am a supportive parent. I am an engaged parent. I am an engaged professional. And I hope that we continue this conversation to make sure that our children are properly educated. Thank you. Next up is Larry Moore. Larry Moore? Okay, gotcha. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. I. Oh, it's starting. Okay, cool beans. Um, first, can we just take a breath? Because this is a lot, and it is more than we as a community should be taking on right now. This is a lot going on. This atmosphere and everything is just way too heated. If indeed we are concerned about the well-being of our children, then we have to act like adults. We have to function differently than what we're doing right now because this seems very aggressive and very much full of attack and that's not what this is about. It, it can't be. I, I just don't want it to be that. There are some things that have been said about the program that needs to be corrected. One of those things, and I'll start out right away, with the danger of connecting um, the dots. If we don't connect them right, then things can come across as disgenuine or it can raise the red flags. Um, and Lauren and I, we, we, we know each other. We have talked. This is a lot of what we're talking about is because of what is before our children. We are not um, we are not um, under Planned Parenthood. I understand that Planned Parenthood raises, raises um, red flags for a lot of people. And it should if it does. If it raises red flags, that's... But our program is not under that. Our program is under the Heartland Rural Health Network, which was established in 1995. Um, it is one of the, the states funded, um, initiated uh, grant, um, health networks. There are, we're one of the oldest. There's nine of them. Um, and so the curriculum that was vetted and chosen along with the, the, the network, with parents, with the school board has the Planned Parenthood logo attached to it. But it was developed by professionals and it has their logo attached to it. That's because they adopted that program. The IMAD program itself, IMAD, I Make a Difference, is involved with the Champion for Children's Foundation, the Children's Advocacy Center, Drug Free Highlands, um, Drug Free Hardy. We have done uh, Go Girls, we have done um, bike rodeos, we have worked with the Cops Adapt program. People who know our program know that it is much more than just the sex ed bit of the thing. We need to get together as a community and have this conversation about what's before our kids truthfully and honestly. There was a gentleman that said, <laughs> And I, I, I could go to the point where he said it. But he said that um, one of the male uh, instructors goes to the classes and teaches uh, in drag or in, in 
dresses up like a girl and teaches um, the program. Nowhere ever has that happened. Not ever. Like you can, if, if you think it has happened, please find that evidence and make that clear. Do not say things to inflame and divide our community. I am so sick and tired of it. It's, we're already divided as a nation. There's already so much stuff going on that we don't need stuff that is breaking apart our fibers. That is one of them. Do not lie. Do not um, add things that are not true. Because it's hard to come up here and, and rework it. We now have to spend our energy correcting those things. It's not fair. And if it's not true, it's not true. So that is one. We actually do care about what's before our children. We have taken the curriculum from being a 14 um, lesson curriculum down to a nine lesson curriculum. We have 16 days. We're down to, um, f to five days. Anyways, I, uh, any, I have books. I have books for you that are, that are parent books, that are handout books. Please get them. We have never been able to get this many parents in one room, and we have asked, and we have begged, and we have pleaded, please get the books from me. They're free. They're for you. Please. Thank you. Next up, we have Marissa Adame. Is that right, Adame? Yes. Thank you. Sorry. If I'm wrong, sorry. All right, um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, the board. Um, my name is Marissa Adame. I'm a current college student at Warner University, where I'm also part of the Alpha Lama Delta National Honor Society. I recently graduated with my associate's degree, and I'm actually um, majoring in criminal justice, working on my bachelor's. Um, I come before you today in regards to the I Matter, I Make a Difference program, sharing my experience with the Get Ready program. I'm a former student here in Highlands County, where I attended Helgusta Middle School. Even though it's been a few years now, I would like to testify of how successful the program has been in my personal life. Through the Get Real program, we were able to learn different aspects of life skills and discuss the topics regarding sexual education. Learning these topics has helped me become educated and comfortable in learning about the development of my body and my character. Being in middle school, I was also encouraged by my instructors to have these conversations with my parents regarding the different lessons that were being taught. I was able to grow a bond with my parents and feel comfortable about talking about the physical, emotional, and mental development of myself. I was able to carry these different tools throughout my life that I was taught through the Get, Ready, uh, the Get Real program to help me in my future. Today, I am able to share these different aspects that I have learned within the program with my friends and my peers. Um, being a young lady in college, discussing the agenda of healthy versus unhealthy relationships and the importance of consent has never been so important before. With the fast development of technology and the vast majority of our students with phones and computers, we're able to have access to the internet than we have been in the last 10 years. So it's important for our students, including myself, to have, um, to have a fair opportunity to learn factual, scientific-based evidence, information, such as the Get Ready program provides. I hope to encourage our community to listen to the voices of our students, including myself, and to meet the educational needs. Um, in conclusion, I would like to share one of my favorite quotes. Um, Education must enable one to sift and weigh evidence, to discern the truth from the false, the real from the unreal, and the facts from the fiction. Dr. Martha Luther King, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Alexa Colon. Good afternoon, my name is Alexa Colon, and um, I'm here to express my support to the IMA program. I am a mother of two, which both of them participated in the IMA program, one in the Gold Girls, the other one in the IMA. I have two nieces that also had the privilege to participate in the, in the program. I can say that the teachings from the program benefit them, yes. Was one of the, I was one of the busy moms that was not able to go to the meetings. But I always make sure that when they came home, I asked them, what did you learn? 
How did it make you feel? How do you think that this information is going to help you in the future? By them participating from this program and learning that the most important thing is that you go to your trusted adult to talk about these subjects, I was able to have that communication with them, one that I was not allowed. Why? Because I was born in a church community, Hispanic mother, which those topics, they were not touched. We did not talk about that. But after this program, my kids were able to have the confidence to come to me and talk about these subjects, and they get the correct information, the healthy information for them that is going to benefit them in the future. This is a generation that is about technology. They have a freedom that we did not have. They could find so many things in these social platforms. Do we know what they listen to? Do we know the shows that they are watching? The lyrics in these songs that the kids are listening these days, it's not like what I was listening when I was growing up. And it's better to have a program like this that you could go with the healthy and the correct information to guide them on a healthy future. This is not about, I understand that some parents, they have their kids that probably they're not emotionally ready to listen to these information. But you have the option, if you think that your child is not prepared, you have the option to opt them out. Do not exclude the kids that are mentally ready and they're gonna benefit from this information to not have the access to it. I can tell you and I can attest, I have two kids, 16 and 22. I have two nieces that to this day, they still remember this program. And I would like for you, instead of saying, if the parents listen to what they are teaching here, they'll die. I listen to it. I'm still alive. If I can handle it and I could open that door of communication with my child, I think they can handle it and they can listen to it. But let's allow them to have the correct information. We cannot base this in just one group because not everybody is the same. Not everybody mentality and emotion is the same. Some of them are not gonna be ready, but some of them, they are ready now. And we are seeing a part that we wanna take something that statistically, IMAP program have the numbers to show that is successful. Numbers are talking by themselves. We are not talking about something that has been here a year. IMAT program and Go Girls and the Harlem Rural Health Network, it has been for years, and they have the numbers to show that this is working. If it's working, why do we want to take it away? I don't think it's fair to rob our future children from something that is working. If it's not working, take it away. But if it's working, let's leave it here. If you have something that you don't like, let's go ahead and sit down and change it. But it's not the tug of war, the pushing and saying and comments, that is not gonna fix it. The only thing that we are showing is to our kids that parents are fighting over something. Let's have a professional and healthy communication. And that's the best example that we could give to our children. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Nellie Ford. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Nellie Ford. I'm a licensed clinical social worker um, here in the state of Florida. And um, I've been a social worker for 20 years. I want to tell you a little bit about my experience and why I'm here today. I do have two children who are public school um, students and one that has um, participated in IMAD every year. Um, I was a prevention counselor at an elementary school here in the county when I first graduated from Florida State um, where I helped kids um, stay drug free and taught them about public health. And um, after that I went to New York and I actually worked for an outreach education program. We had a grant from the CDC and I went into schools, dozens of schools, talk to hundreds of children about sex education. Um, I even, um, if y'all watched 21 Jump Street when you were kids, where they pretended to be students, I pretended to be a student. 
I went into schools and pretended to have HIV in order to teach children about how I took care of myself and how I could be on the swim team and how I could do things like a regular kid, even though I was a grown up, but they didn't know. Um, so I say all of this, and then of course I worked also for the school board for six years as a school social worker and a mental health therapist. To go to school for that long and be a social worker and become licensed and the board and everything, y'all, it takes a lot of education, but it also takes a lot of research. And research, doesn't lie, like peer-reviewed journals. I mean, the Journal of Adolescent Health has proven in I mean, so many articles that we have to have a comprehensive sex education program for the kids. I'm shaking because I got emotional from the girls who were talking and someone earlier who said who suffers most, and they were talking about the employees here, but all I kept thinking about is who suffers most if we don't have this education in our county. I don't think it's probably the children of the people in this room, even me, um, because I hope that most of us are adults that our kids come home and talk to us and we process all of this information, whether it's in our values or not. I am a devout Catholic. When my own son came home and talked to me about a condom and was like, mommy, don't we think, and I said, yes but let's talk about this. And we sat down and we talked about it and it was fantastic. And I thought, yes, he came home and we had an open and amazing conversation about how what he learned at school relates to our faith and our values. And you know what? He lives in this world with so many different types of people. So many, and he plays sports and he loves playing sports with so many different types of kids from all walks in this community. And I don't want him to live in that bubble that I grew up into. So, oh my goodness, I have so much typed up here. But, <laughs> but I will just leave with that, honestly, just heartfelt. Um, there are kids, so many kids, that don't have a representative here right now. I have spent my whole career, minus two years in New York, pretending to be somebody, um, here in Highlands County working with these children. We cannot just close our eyes and pretend that the research, that the rural, whatever, I forgot the name already, I'll be, <laughs> um, that they didn't cross all of their T's and dot their I's. Now it's our job when they get home to talk about our values, but the science, the research, the real, the risk factors, and the protective factors. Y'all, that's science. And we've got to protect our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Nellie. I know next time we're going to have to have you uh, sing the national anthem for us. <laughs> yeah. Got a great voice. So. Okay, next up, Larry Overfield. Larry Overfield, a CPT, concerned citizen, property owner, taxpayer. Good morning, or afternoon, everybody, evening, whatever. <laughs> um, I want to talk about our moral obligation to the next generation. First of all, I want to thank uh, Lauren, Skyler, and all you other people tonight that come up and talked about this IMAD program, okay? But a lot of things are brought forward in, in uh, knowledge that none of us were aware of, including from what the impression I got last week was that there were some people on the board that didn't, wasn't aware of what was being taught in this program. If my impression is a mistake, I offer my apologies. That's the impression I had. Um, I also want to thank Hanlon's new son and Tim Moody for the article in their publication. I want to talk about morality, and I want to talk about biblical morality. In the March 8th meeting, several people did mention uh, biblical morality in comparison to what was being taught in the IMAD program. The question I have is, is this brought up in the IMAD program? Well, not that I could find. However, Eastern mysticism in the form of yoga and meditation is discussed. 
Some would say that sexual union is not taught in the Bible, so why go there? Well, that's not true. Go to Genesis 2.24, and the first thing you read is, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Okay, in Genesis 2.24, the phrase is joined to his wife and become one flesh describes sexual union. Imagine that. Not just the physiological, okay? The sexual union it refers to is always involves a personal relationship and commitment, you know, like marriage. All the above that I've mentioned is, is the proper place for sex. The Bible also teaches that the wrong use of sex. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 16 talks about the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her, you know, like become one flesh. Um, there are many euphemisms, excuse me, there's a lot of words in here I don't usually use, in the Bible, such as lie with or lie, to describe the illicit or inappropriate sexual acts. Genesis 19, 32, 35 speaks about the incest between Lot and his two daughters. Genesis 39, 17, or 7 through 10 talks about Potiphar's wife attempting to seduce Joseph. 2 Samuel 3.14 speaks about Ammon, King David's son, raping his own sister, Tamer. Leviticus 18.22 speaks of the sin of homosexuality. Exodus 22.19 speaks of the sin, excuse me if I mess this word up, but bestiality. Let me remind you that Genesis 2.17 and 3.21 tells that the death, that death is a penalty for all sin. In the article in the Highlands News Sun, IMAD official states, we were asked to prefer, refer to condoms as risk reducers. These are, this program is designed for sixth to eighth grade, correct? That's what I read. That's 11 to 13 years of age. Can you imagine what, the conversation, what kind of conversation that will spark, risk reducers? These are 13 to, or 11 to 13 years of age, these children. By law, they're children, born into families, not to the state. And by parents, they should be taught about life. Colossians 3.21 teaches us, fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they will not lose heart. As fathers, we frustrate and confuse our children by not being responsible parents. What, talking to them about sex? How much more are children confused by absent? or absent fathers. For many years, I was an absent father in my son's life. Man, I can never regain those years, and neither can my son. I would not wish that kind of emptiness on anyone. For you abandoned children, there is hope. God tells us in 2 Corinthians six eighteen, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. For you absentee fathers, that same Heavenly Father can correct the flaw in your character, just as he did in mine. Many false teachings are creeping into our schools. This is the result of taking the Bible out of our schools, which were used as textbooks since colonial days. In 1782, the first English Bible that was printed in America was authorized by the Continental Congress. Got just a few seconds. So I'm not done. <laughs> was authorized by the Continental Congress and, and verified by the two uh, chaplains in, in both houses. In 17, uh, uh, this was done for public use. In 1963, Bibles removed, were removed as ruled by the Supreme Court. Let me tell you about the Supreme Court. Any judgment coming out of the Supreme Court is an opinion, not legislation. Thank you. I want to get to these two things, but I can't help you, man. Thank you. The last I have here on stage here, the last one I have is Amber Javaltney. Do I have that right this time? Waltney. I'm going to get it. Make it real big with the W. I'm so sorry about that. So. I know you did. Well, just write the W where I can read it. W. Oh, so, okay, sorry. Gotcha. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I came a little more prepared this time. Um, I did send you all an email, but it was like late last night. Um, so, sorry. So, I do thank you for listening to the concerns about the IMAD program. 
Um, and most of it is actually good. Um, I have no doubt about that. It, some of it is, is really informative for the kids. I know, um, you know, other kids come back and they talk and everything. So my kids have heard some things and it was like, oh, you know, that's actually not a bad part of it. But, you know, there are some parts that do need to be addressed. But anyhow, that's not why I'm up here tonight. So I didn't mention the child safety matters that is taught in our elementary schools. So that program, most of it is amazing. It is really, really good. However, I'm concerned with some of the wording that is required for, at my school, it's our guidance counselor that does it, um, that, that they have to say to kindergartners. So we are putting thoughts and ideas into our baby's heads. The wording is, it is also abuse, which I'm, I'm all for we need to teach these things, but I just feel like we need to be careful with our wording. It says, it is also abuse to your body if someone uses their hands or mouth to touch your private body parts, or if they ask you to touch their body parts with your hands or mouth. So, and they say that K through five. So absolutely, I agree. Kids need to know about good touch, bad touch. Absolutely. We talk about that at a very young age in my home. However, we had students that are now touching other students to feel, to see what it is, you know, what, what are they talking about? We've had students who, um, and again, I did put that in my email, who snuck off at a birthday party and undressed to see, because we're, we're putting these ideas in our babies' minds. And I get it, trust me, I know kids are sexually abused. Trust me, I know that wholeheartedly, unfortunately. But most of our kids don't know, and we shouldn't put thoughts and ideas in their minds. So, like I said, most of the child safety matters is great. It is amazing. I've gone through the book myself. I just know that the wording has been of concern for a lot of our staff. Um, the next thing is at the high school, it's called Purpose Prep, and it's not a sexual class, I think. I, it's like a social emotional learning type thing. Um, however, you're not allowed to opt out of that. And I don't understand why, because it also says in the code of conduct that you can. So I, I don't understand why parents aren't allowed to opt out of that one. Um, but specifically, because I'm sure you guys, you know, don't know. But anyways, um, in section four, I believe it is. And I did, I researched for weeks before I sent you guys the email. The curriculum, I've gone online, I've searched everywhere, and I cannot find where it says it's going to talk about LBGTQ anywhere in that program. However, in section four, it does. There are specific sections. Um, I've only seen a clip. I have myself not seen the whole thing um, where they talk about the history, and then the students are required to answer questions afterwards. So it talks about the history of how gay, lesbian all came about. It talks about how to come out to your parents, which I'm sure there's kids who are gay, whatever. That, that's their little red wagon, not mine. But my thing is, this is for a grade. If you go to the Avon Park High School website, if you go to Sebring High School website, I did not go to Lake Placid's website, um, it clearly states that the student has to log on to a purpose press. It is for a grade, it is mandatory, it must be done, you cannot opt out. But it clearly states in our code of conduct that you can. So, I don't understand why parents can't opt out of that. Um, but again, in the purpose prep, I think it's social emotional and I think that part is very important for our kids um, because of technology. I think it's ruining us. Um, the next thing um, is high school bathrooms. I only have 23 seconds. Okay, high school bathrooms. Kids are afraid to go to the bathroom at the high school. Let me tell you why. A girl goes into the bathroom, there's another girl over there vaping, and then there's two kids, whether it's a girl and a girl or a girl and a boy, doesn't really matter, they're coming out of a stall together because they just had sex. Really? This kid, sees all this and is like, oh my goodness, just wants to go to the bathroom, but can't, so they leave. Regardless if this kid tells on them or anything, 
and those kids somehow get called up to the office, they've seen the kid in the bathroom. They think that kid told. So now they have it out for the kid who they saw in the bathroom. This is happening. Admin knows about it, and admin's response was, there's nothing I can do. I call BS on that. That is unacceptable. Now, my kids aren't in high school yet, and I have friends who have kids in high school, and to be honest, they're scared to come talk about it for fear of retaliation. So we have got to look at our high school bathrooms. It's probably happening in middle school, too. I really don't know. But I know for a fact it's happening in high school, and it needs to be looked at. Something is not right there. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Miss Waltney. I got that right this time. Yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm working on that. That's it. That's all I have up here. Is that correct? Okay, gotcha. Okay. Next up, we have our superintendent's report. Okay. <laughs> Just two minutes. Okay. Do you want to? We're gonna. Break? We're, Do you mind? No, not at all. Quick break. Um, for two minutes. <laughs> Ten till. Yeah, no more coffee at one o'clock. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, everybody's leaving because we're about to talk more about this.
had to get a little break. So. Okay. Superintendent's report, G. All right, thank you, thank you. Just a few things for tonight. I would like permission uh, to pull 7A, Carnegie Learning Professional Learning Services, number two and three proposal. I would also like to request permission to pull item 10C, consider approval of the Insurance Committee Surgery Plus recommendation. And there's a number of workshops that um, have been asked for and that we need to have, and so I'll have those dates for you. First of all, request a workshop to renew, review and discuss Highlands Virtual School enrollment and allocations on uh, April 5th at 3.30. Request a workshop to review and discuss allocations for instructional, non-instructional, and Title I on April 19th at 4 p.m. Request a workshop to review and discuss the 22-23 Code of Conduct and the Academy at Youth Care Lane on April 26th at 2 p.m. Last week, we had a request to do a workshop in regard to health education, and so I've asked Mr. McClure if he'd speak to that, and then we can get a little more information on that. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I've listened to everybody tonight, as all of us have. I, I think the gentleman who said emotions are running very high on this was spot on. Um, I also share concerns with, with any of the parents here who, who care about their children, and I think that's all of you, uh, and what they're being taught in the schools. That's uh, of grave concern. It was even when I was, a, my children were of, were of uh, the age to be taught in the schools. Um, and some of the things that were taught there, I didn't agree with either. I, I actually was one of those parents who intervened and objected. Oddly enough, I, I have this to say to you. I think that it hurt me more than helped me, if you can understand what I'm saying, because my daughter uh, rebelled against being singled out and not being allowed to participate in some things. And I think that that hurt our relationship a lot. So uh, I'm not saying what's right or what's wrong. I don't know any better than you do. But I am saying that these kids at this age are not all the same. They're simply not. Their parents aren't all the same. You aren't all the same. Uh, some kids really, really need to be taught this. Others, maybe not. Uh, I'm getting off topic, and I realize that, and I'm sorry, <laughs> but I, I have to say this, okay? The, the, uh, the one good thing I've really heard tonight about this program that I think is very, very important is that if nothing else, the kids come to you as parents and say, this is what we talked about. So you get a chance then to talk to them about the things you've heard. If, if you get angry and say, what right do they have to teach you about this kind of stuff? Uh, how does a child react to that? What does a child think? Whoa, there's more to this than I thought. Um, maybe that's when they become involved in the meetings to undress or something. I don't know. but. But it, it, we have to be realistic and address this as mature adults, I think. And I'm a very conservative guy, I'll tell you now. Um, I'm uh, very conservative, I'll leave it at that. Some things I can't say back here, I could say out there, I guess. But the, the bottom line is, um, I, I think that, that we, we have an orderly way to address this, and that's what we're gonna have to do. Uh, the, the things that we always engage in, the debate back and forth between speaker and the audience, things like that. We can't be doing that, okay? The, this is a time for them to address their comments to the board. You have to listen to it. I listen to it. We all listen to it. But there's an orderly way to resolve everything, and, and that's the only way we're ever going to get to where we need to go. So having, having said that, uh, interestingly, we uh, looked at board policy of all things uh, about such matters and came up with, uh, with, with something that I think is buried in a totally wrong place, but nonetheless it is here. It was under the topic public complaints. And 
one of those complaints would be challenges to material used in a classroom made available in a school library are included on a reading list, uh, not including instructional materials, okay? Uh, and it emphasizes that the board is responsible for the content of all instructional materials and other materials used in the classroom uh, and, and in the, in the uh, education of your children. Now, uh, and, and they can be provided with access to the materials. Now, the, it goes on to say who can file an objection to material used in a classroom, which oddly enough would be the parents or any resident of the county defines who that would be. But here's the main point I, I wish to make, and it is this, that the complaint is to be addressed to the superintendent in writing and shall include author, title, publisher, complainant's familiarity with the material challenged, sections challenged by page and item, um, whether it contains pornographic or prohibitive material, and goes on to be as, it, as defined in Florida statutes, which is pretty strong stuff, actually, is not suited to student needs and their ability to comprehend the material presented or is inappropriate for the grade level and age group for which the material is used. Uh, that sounded great when I read it fast, but it's also very difficult to pin down exactly what is appropriate for this grade level. For what this child and this grade level and this child can often be two very, very different things, bottom line. Uh, and so, having said that, I, I don't know that there's a, a, a clear path here, but the point I'm trying to make is, to do this in an orderly fashion, the group that has done the research and done whatever, gathered all these materials, needs to get together, put, a, put something down in writing, say, here's, here's what we object to. And I'm going to give you this policy. I, we'll make it available after the meeting. It's right here. Or if you want to pick it up during the meeting because you don't want to leave, that's okay too. Whatever you got, I'll happily give it to you. But the, the, uh, the, the point is to keep things orderly, the board does have a policy on this, and we really ought, ought to follow the policy. Now, I, I can tell you that the board members, I am positive, all want to have a workshop on this. We all want to, everybody wants to hear what's going on in our schools, what has gotten so many people so upset so defensive, so offensive, you know, back and forth. What, what's going on? Uh, it's, it's their responsibility to make these calls. Here we are, okay? So it starts, though, with this complaint with the superintendent, as it should, okay? The superintendent gets a chance to try to resolve it. I don't think the superintendent's going to resolve this one. I don't think you do either, okay? This, it's probably going to end up coming to the board, but that's okay. This process is what we need to honor. So the superintendent appoints a review committee. Uh, they have to meet, they have 10 days to get it all done. They review the appropriateness of the material for the age and the maturity level of the students with whom it is being used. Accuracy of the materials, objectivity of the material, the use to be made of the material. Uh, you know, there, there's been a lot of representations here tonight that there have been a lot of misrepresentations made about what's actually being taught. I don't know what's actually being taught, and I'm not sure the board members know what's actually being taught either. Uh, and maybe it's how it's being taught more than what's actually being taught that's a problem as well. I don't know. Haven't seen it. But then the, the, the committee's recommendation goes to the superintendent within 10 days following formation. Now, that's the, they have to do it within 10 days by this policy. Uh, then the complainant uh, is notified in writing of the committee's recommendation and she advises the board of the action taken or recommended. The complainant then may appeal this decision, and they have a maximum of 30 days to do that. Well, you know, that's maximum. Could be two days and get it before the board quickly. That, I think the board is genuinely interested in having this workshop. We'll talk about that in just a minute, too. So the process then would be it, it, it goes to the superintendent first. She appoints a committee. They look at it. Then it comes to the board and then the board determines it. Uh, and, and, I, and I get that, as I'm sure all of you do too, that, that the board has to have something to determine. I think our first speaker tonight, I can't remember soon, meant not Mr. Demchak, but the person who spoke about this, basically said, 
what what are you going to do? We we need to understand what what it is that's going on at this workshop. And, and I believe that if we looked at things, my thinking is this: A, what are the what are the actual statutory requirements? What are we doing? Why are we doing it? All right. B, what is the current content of what's being taught? And C, what alternatives exist to what should be taught to continue compliance with the statute? I mean, that's that's. That's really where we're at, okay? And and that that I believe maybe I'm wrong, board members, but is that not what you would want to address and look at? I, I think that's a good start anyway, okay? What actually comes out of the meeting as it develops, I don't know. Uh, but but I, I do know that what we don't need here are shouting matches. What we don't need are are, are people that are that are coming in that are on the far fringes. Uh, Somehow or other, we have to develop a consensus about what is right and what should be taught and, and where to go. And uh, this is at a very high level right now. When uh, At this level, I don't think it gets any higher, really, uh, locally anyway. I, I, I certainly can understand the gentleman who is addressing uh, the legislators and some of the things that come up with. You know, I, I'm glad I don't have that job either because there, there are too many considerations that go into all of the things that they try to do. I think some things they do are wrong, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, having said all that, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, I know the board is anxious to get this workshop and, and calm this thing down, get, get control of it. I, I think that uh, the superintendent is anxious to do that too. Uh, I just felt it was my duty to at least advise the board that we need an orderly process here as we address this. And, and, and this is what your own policy says to do. So with that, I would recommend you follow your policy and, and we proceed on those grounds. Thank you. Let me just ask, because I had told some that had asked me if, if we had this workshop, because we had talked about yes, allowing the- We did. The, mm -hmm. But, yeah, but now we're in, the, you know, we're, we're in the process, we're gonna be, in our consent items, agreeing to add that part now to our workshops, will that be done? Well, you know, I would say this: these are your rules, and your lawyer is going to tell you, for heaven's sake, let's use common sense. Thank you. Uh, everybody, <laughs> everybody <laughs> sure. wants uh, comments at the workshop. For us to bring something this volatile up and not allow comments okay. would be insanity. Because I uh, told some I thought there was, and then I was like, you know. Well, I, I think the board. The board, if they want to hear comments, they can receive comments. Let's do it. Okay. So we're going to workshop on this on the 26th. On, no, on, no, 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 no. We don't have a date. Yeah. I've, as oh, soon, when we had our meeting last board meeting and the request right. was made, I reached out to Dr. Campbell and uh, Ms. Blackman to start doing some preliminary work and to further define from the board what were you wanting exactly in the workshop. And so they came upon the policy, and then that did a little clarifying. But Dr. Campbell, if you want to speak to what you've done thus far and really what you're needing help with as far as defining what we want to do and how we want to follow Yes, up. so just to make sure this is the best use and it's meeting the need of what you're requesting, um, we did discuss going over the statute basically what we are required to teach in the comprehensive health education for our students. The other part I asked and did get some feedback on is, do we want to review the IMAD curriculum? And I got yeses back. The, the part that I um, had to reach out to state is the idea that um, there's some interest in other comprehensive health curriculums that are available. So in my processing, I want to do this in a fair way um, and so I have to, I know that our state doesn't provide a list of other comprehensive health um, curriculums. So I have reached out to our health state contacts to say what vendors, what um, providers of curriculum do you know of? Because we have to communicate that Highlands County is looking for alternatives. If that is the direction we're going, that is not, uh, I haven't gotten a response via email yet. Um, based on different policy or board policy with regard to instructional materials in the core, we definitely cannot say we don't like this, so just let's choose this one. We have to be fair and we do have to say if we're going to not make the decision to move forward with Get Real curriculum, 
that I want to be able to say I have, we have advertised of the, you know, the, the interest of hearing from and learning about other comprehensive curriculums. I wouldn't be able to speak expertly to those curriculums, so we would have a process of inviting them to this workshop. So that's why I feel like we need time for that part of it at least, because they would come and we would then have the opportunity to either do it in the workshop or maybe they'll send you their curriculum um, or page by page. I'm not sure what that looks like. So I'm trying to uh, right now get a list. Haven't heard back from the two people at the state that I've reached out to. Um, and so that essentially, I wonder, can we break it into two workshops? The, the right now ready things that I could provide you, probably could do it tonight if we um, had the opportunity, would be the statute of what needs to be covered in the comprehensive health education, and then the Get Real curriculum. We do have it, and we can go through it page by page in a workshop. The part that will take longer is the desire to hear about other curriculums out there. And purpose prep was another thing that was referenced. And so do you want to review purpose so prep So purpose prep well? is under student services. Right, that's with Ms. Um, Blackman. So and I do know that Ms. Blackman talked about purpose prep being videos. Yeah. Um, and so how I and know she, him. I don't want to speak for her, but um, going through that um, video by video, I'm not sure how she wanted to do that. It's a six hour training, so it would be six hours of those videos. Um, so I think we were just so I'm for asked, yes that is yeah. that's the clarification that I'm asking for um, clearly the topic is urgent Certainly. so do we want to break it up it with the now information then when I give the state context an opportunity to actually get back to me um, and possibly give me a list so that we can advertise that Highlands County is looking for other providers but I I don't know, are we saying that we're looking for other providers? I'm not, are we? Or you want to review the current Like are we reviewing, we're yes, and that's that where what I'm having some pause. My, my question as far as being urgent, mm -hmm. it's over. It's over for now as far yes. as well, that's a year that's and So when does it finished. start again? It starts again next? Next, next, next year. Next like fall. What? February? Or, or what when, when, is it, when is it scheduled to? The to next school year? Yeah. So the, the principals are, they have the opportunity to coordinate with the IMAD, or the IMAD contact when they want to roll it out for their school. So okay. this year, it happened in the second semester based on a grant approval on their end. Okay. Um, the grant is approved, I believe, for a couple years in a row. So next year, I believe that they can start as early as September in conjunction with communication with the principals. The principals are able to set that schedule, but this year it wasn't available in the first semester because of some grant hold up. Yeah, we, I did get a book from him as far as that goes. Can mm -hmm. we get the material? Like I said, I'd like to get that's the material and then maybe discuss it at the next meeting. You know, and I hate to, the gentleman left, but a lot of it was the, I understand is the presentation, mm -hmm. the forum, the, there was a lot of issues because obviously it's been going on for years yep. and, and, and this is the big year that things have kind of hit the fan. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I want to review the entire curriculum and then at the next board shop say, hey, we need to, we need to okay. change it. We need to review Got it. it. So um, the first and the, tar me. and the target that we have to hit, which you're talking about, well, the, the statute, absolutely. So with the statute that. of what? Yeah. So we absolutely. So I think that we could definitely have a sooner date if we want to do the statute, what yeah. what needs to be covered, and then a review of the curriculum. I absolutely, again, I'm not an expert in that curriculum, so IMAD representatives will be here with us, and we can flip through page by page. And then the only concern that I've heard is it's not consistent how it's done at each school. So that's why I want to know from them. Is it done differently? Because maybe an administrator has, you know, requested certain things. It's with regard, I would not say with regard to the curriculum, but how it's pres presented. So yes, like for example, I know a school says, hey, we're going to do it through this class, a smaller environment over a longer no, period of yeah, time. Is that what that. you no, mean? No, it's a presentation is different. Because there's different presenters yeah. at the schools. There are, oh, yes, there, there, are, there are multiple presenters. presenters. Mm -hmm. Yes, Agreed. there are. But I have not been in all of those, so I can't speak to that. But we can see the people that show up, majority are from Lake Placid. So obviously, it, it seemed like the majority of them were from Lake Placid as far as that goes. So the present, it just seemed like no, there was a lot of. I think there were some from all the, yeah. the schools. Yeah, it's when you, from all? Yeah. Okay. 
But was it a similar presenter, though, is my kind of question. There's four different ones from what I understand, four different presenters. Right. The, the um, one male presenter that, that was, I, th I think it's the guy that was here, and mm -hmm. the one that passed it, the only one that everybody in the room had any questions about. That's the way I understand and, it. And, 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 There's not a limit on access. Right. And, and it's, it's, you know, I know 100 years ago when I took it, it was a nurse from the health department. And it was more clinical. There's no drama. They don't need the drama. They don't need to get the kids. And I didn't like the idea as far as being co-ed. You know, when we did it, it was in one classroom, and you have 30 kids, and it's not co-ed. And, it, and I, think that, I think that was an issue. I think the present, presentation and the drama involved was the issue. I didn't hear too much about the curriculum. We, I think it's enough we could tweak what's there. Um, so then hearing that, hearing that, I want, I'm in a precarious position because it sounds like, and I, I don't want to misspeak, but if, if there's a presenter issue, I can't workshop that. I'm just like, I, I, I'm and, sorry, and, there's no and, other way to and say I that. And I am work. not saying right. that I agree or disagree that there's a presenter issue because I don't get into that. I, I right. don't, that's not my yeah. deal I'm at all. It's not as bad I just as want to that, be, but it's I want to be able to give you what you're asking for in a workshop, and, and right now it's not, I, I don't know how to satisfy. All I want, I want the full curriculum. Okay, full that curriculum we use. That we yes. use, mm -hmm. that, that whether it's presented with drama or not drama, I want what you they're supposed look to be going it. off of, I can do that. and then what the statute is. Perfect. Perfect. In the standards, Can we have yeah. that in advance? Yeah. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, yes. absolutely. So that we can look so at So we can discuss it the next absolutely. meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. Then, then we know what we have now. We know and, how it's presented. And, and not for nothing, it is linked to our website, but we can get you hard copies yeah. and digital. I can get that. And a little bit about the schools and when they present it on average and how they do that. Perhaps have the principals present so that they could speak to how Present at the workshop or would you like it before? I mean, as far that as that information principles. from I, I the like oh, I like the information before. Before okay. our next meeting. So I can have that, I can yeah. have each principal um, at the middle schools because we only do this at the middle schools okay. communicate how they <coughs> lay it out. And so just to be clear, it wasn't about like class size or if it's auditorium well, so I, I, versus because when I just asked Miss Howerton said no. Cases. And what Bill had shared. Yeah, I have I'm class size. I'm that. And oh, now, so you are that. Okay. And as far as this parent handbook here, so the whole curriculum is the curriculum, the dating, bullying, social media, vaping, and anxiety, marijuana, and screen time. Is that something that they all cover as far? So they're just doing the sex ed as far as the part of it. But we'll have all the curriculum that's presented it all for, you. for the Thank middle you. school that you can take a look at before our workshop. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, Get the information about how they split up kids and divide them. And, Absolutely. And the time I can definitely when I was an administrator, it was the elementary school. Was it still the nurses that do it there, or IMAD does that one too? IMAD does not do it. Okay, but the nurses do that from the health department, correct? They did that one. I can't speak to elementary. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, they did when I yeah. went that long. Yeah, she just said <laughs> I don't want to speak to something which, I can't actually factual. Which floor are you? The Hoyle. Oh, okay, and then Carrie's in the back. She could. Now we're talking about curriculum. They tied up in a nice, pretty bow. So they don't go into, we're going to talk about, we're going to say, if you want to be a boy, if you're born a boy and you want to be a girl, that's okay. So, I, if so I may, you know, I... If you're just looking at curriculum, you're looking at three words <laughs> okay. they put, it sounds fabulous. It, it comes back to presenter, it sounds like, a little bit. Okay. Mr. Chair, question yes. I have. One of, the, one of the things that uh, was addressed kind of in preparation for the five minutes I had before yes. this, was uh, whether or not you wish for the board. Certainly we talked about requirements, what's the actual content. Then the other question was alternatives, okay? So I think what Dr. Campbell's saying is, I can't develop alternatives unless I go out for this. Now, am I hearing the board say uh, that what we wanna do is say, what requires it, what are we teaching? And then we'll decide if we wanna change. And, and only then would you go out for alternat alternatives in which case you'd come back for a, another workshop uh, to choose alternatives or how would, how would uh, what are we yeah, talking about? Yeah, I, I'm thinking let's look at the curriculum we have here because no matter what curriculum you go to, if there's people add living things, that, that's not the curriculum problem, that's the, the uh, presenter problem, which, which we, yeah, if that's the problem, share. these ad libs and things going on, we need to rein that in. And that's what happens with a big group. You got one class clown that throws out crazy questions and things which gets everyone off track. Sure. 
So was that? I think okay. That's where so we are. then, then we question. Yeah. Then issue two is. Yes. Uh, I talked about the policy. Uh, it seems like the board is anxious to jump into this matter. Uh, are you going to waive your policy in this regard and and schedule a workshop, or do you want to go through the process? Yeah, well, how long is that process going to take? The process says we we have to make the presentation. Superintendent appoints a committee. Committee uh, has. That one. 10 days <laughs> they make their recommendation she goes back with the complainant if not satisfied it comes to the board yeah I think we waive that policy okay <laughs> that's what I'm hearing yeah. and that's fine we need to know what's what these sure. things we discussed on we've, it, as a board it's so that we it, know been a right lot of what's going yeah, on I'm good and that. the sooner the better I think because yeah. each meeting we seem to have more and more yeah. We all have interested. some knowledge of it. I had knowledge as administrator, but it's a little while ago, so I, I don't want to know what's going on this sorry, year today. No. Sorry. Question, Mr. McCloskey, are we at an emergency? I have to waive board policy? Well, I think the I don't know there has to be an emergency item to waive board policy. Uh, the, the board has indicated they want to set a workshop and hear this. Uh, it'll be a workshop. They're setting a workshop, okay? Uh, it's not precisely in accordance with this. But they are waiving board policy by doing so. But at this point, just reviewing curriculum. That's it. So at any right. time, we can review mm -hmm. curriculum. Yeah. Right. right. Yes. That's so all we're doing. I'm good with that. Okay. okay. So we'll set a, a workshop as soon as Dr. Campbell can make all the contacts that she needs to make. And uh, it will be sooner than later for sure. But I don't have a date tonight okay. for you. That's, that's definitely understandable. And what that was going to be an evening workshop, as I recall, wasn't it? I think it, it should be so that it, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Be happy to do that. that, that time, location change sure, that as well? we can reach out to some reach of the schools. Sebring Middle. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Good idea. <clears throat> I, I allow for That was, no, that's workshop, what we're discussing what tonight happens. when the workshop changes to the APA requirement. But, but you do understand our concerns are your concerns. Your con yeah, we, we have some of the very same concerns as far as what we're talking about. I, um, I just want to, I'm holding off some travel plans so that I can that's attend it. this workshop. Yeah. Um, I have the week of after Easter. <laughs> oh, yeah, because okay. I'm okay. just, hold, I'm Good. like, give me one more day. So if we can just at least not schedule it that night, walk so um, we've already set the, H, the HVS on the 5th. If we came a little earlier, um, since it's already a date that's set, um, Dr. Longshore just communicated that date. Would now that, that wouldn't be in the evening then. Will that make a difference to the board? Oh. I like for, yeah, well, I like to have public yeah, comment yeah, and all like that. So it can be a little after that. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. you mean like. I don't have a calendar in front of me. So, so that one so starts at, that starts at 3.30. I think we started that one at 3 30. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, how long if, if we're we talking did, about a different location for this one? This will go to the board. It's a board meeting that night as well. So okay. that would be the issue. For so that evening. is too soon. Yeah. I thought. Too soon. But with okay. a board not, meeting, if we're not talking about this, our board meeting lasts about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we could have the board meeting and have the <laughs> workshop directly after that when everyone's, you know. That's a possibility so that, if you want to do it someone at just a board said it's meeting. Too soon. <laughs> On April 5th. And so uh, is, do you think, is that too soon? I, I, I just have one thing to throw in the mix here. I was going to talk later, but I'm gone from April 12th to the 22nd. Oh. Okay, so if you're going to have it, I don't know that it has to be on Tuesday. It could be any night of the week, I would think. But I'd like April 5th, I'd go after the meeting. Yeah, Yeah. do that. April 5th after the meeting. I'm, I, yeah. I'm sorry? But, yeah. Workshop at three thirty. No, ma'am. Talk about with the board itself. Oh. So that's um, child abuse prevention. So we'll have that group coming. We also have a school coming and a presentation. So I don't mind. I'm just saying those are the things that are going to be have to shut down the agenda. Not any. Don't let anybody put anything on the agenda. <laughs> so that it's a quicker <laughs> meeting. Um, and I, you know, we need to check and make sure that either school has is able to. Let us 
so then we'll, we can come back with a later date. Do, it just popped the, up that we were already doing one for HGS, sure. so I figured why not. Sure. April 4th. April 4th is fine. It's just our DSAC. Uh, Maybe the DSAC parents would want to join they that probably, night. They probably would. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, bad yeah. bad. I don't know. Make that as the agenda. Yeah. I like them too. Who you have here is DSAC? Ms. Connor. Uh, on April 4th is the DSAC meeting. And I uh, was just, is it a possibility that. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, my, my voice is gone, but I'll do my very best. Uh, on April 4th is our DSAC meeting. I don't know, would you want that to invite them to join this? I, Did you already have something for the agenda that you spoke It's a regular to agenda. That's, so. I didn't yeah. know that sometimes they had a speech, a topic. I thought I was hearing some conversation that I think that might have been with you. Okay. Okay. So we're. So, so we'll come back with it no, okay. another day. Yeah. How about that? It'll be advertised, I'm sure, in the paper and everything else. So we'll work on it. We just got to keep April in mind 11th. the dates that Mr. McClure is yeah, going on. April, April, April the 11th. He's going for the 12th to the 11th to the 22nd. That would be April 20th. April, April 19th. He's gone. Yeah, the 12th April, to the 22nd. How about April the 11th? Yeah, April the yeah, 11th. That's what we're I know. That's why I, I heard you. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. I you. want you here. <laughs> and that's location to be determined or here? I would have to ask either school because sometimes they have things after school. And I, I just have to check. But, yeah, but probably between the locations that we could reach out to, mm -hmm. April 11th. Okay. Dr. Campbell, is that available on your okay. calendar? And what time would you like to set that for? 530? 530. 5.30 on April the 11th. <clears throat> I'll reach out to Sebring High and Sebring Middle tomorrow okay. and see that there's a Thank you. Do you have something to add? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, Mr. Brantley was talking about getting the uh, <clears throat> curriculum. As I was researching some of this, and I, I, I don't know if I read this right or wrong, but it sounds to me like some of the material they use cannot be given to parents. Parents have asked for it because of copyright. All right. So if that's true, then how are we knowing that we're going to get everything that they're? And if you if if we can, do we get a chance to look at that before the we as citizens? Do we get a chance to look at that before the? Uh, is that currently workshop? online, Dr. Campbell? It is currently online. The curriculum is currently online. Not all of it. They can't put it all online because of copyright material, or copyright, according okay. to we what I've read. Okay, we will look into it. I'm, I, I can't yeah. speak to that. But, okay. But we Thank will you. look into it. We'll, we'll keep working we'll towards that goal. Okay. That's all we can do tonight. <laughs> so we've come a long way. <laughs> okay, la well, my last announcement, I do have one more, that there will be no executive session tonight, mm -hmm. but I would like to request an executive session following the April 19th board meeting. April 19th. Okay, y'all got all the other workshop dates? Yep. Yes, we are. All right. It's going to be busy for a third month of busy April, April, but that's good. We're going to write it down in case Marlene gets them wrong. We're learning. And <laughs> Did you get the right time? That was a good one, Bill. Everybody's <laughs> learning and everybody's getting better. That's all that's we can. Right. School system is getting better. That's all yeah. we can ask for. So, okay. Number two, adopt the agenda as revised. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Ms. Howerton and a second from Mrs. Shoup. Do we have any public comment? Okay, back to the board for discussion. Are we going to talk any about 6A or just no, we're good for now? That's where I, I so we're did good. kind we of. We kind of a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we kind of discussed that already. So that's the mm -hmm. workshops and the public comment. The so, yeah. Okay. Thank you, though. All right, Ms. Howerton? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. Ms. Brantley? Yes. And Chair Butch? Yes. Okay, down to nine. Motion to approve consent agenda items as presented. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Shoup, a second from Mr. Brantley. Do we have any public discussion? Back to the board for discussion. Okay. Ms. Shoup? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Chair Butch? Yes. Ten A. Consider approval of the superintendent's recommendation for personnel. Move approval. Second. Uh, 
Motion from Ms. Howerton and second from Mr. Brantley. Any public discussion? Back to the board for discussion. Okay. Howerton? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. Chair votes yes. 10B, consider approval of expulsions. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, I'll go with a, a motion from Ms. Shoup, a second from Mr. Brantley. And then there's no public comment on expulsion, so any more board discussion? No. Okay. Ms. Shoup? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Chair votes yes. 12A, consider approval of MOU between School Board of Highlands County and USF. Approval. Second. Okay. A motion from Ms. Howerton, a second from Mrs. Shoup. Any public discussion? Back to the board for discussion. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. Ms. Brantley? Yes. Chair votes yes. 14A, approval of textbook adoptions for English language arts for SOMP to FS. 1006.28. Motion to approve. Second. A motion from Mr. Brantley, a second from Mrs. Shoup. Uh, any more that. Uh, they worked very hard on that. So, in public discussion, you state your name. Linda Montalbano. Have these textbooks? been out in public where people can review them? Yes, I mean, I wonder why we're, re why we're getting new English textbooks. I mean, English doesn't change. Yeah. <laughs> the schedule. Yeah. Do you want to come speak to that, um, Ms. Orna? All right. I was looking for my packet. I know we were doing <laughs> Can you come up to the microphone? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> State your name and your position. It's okay. Oh, you are. Good evening. I'm Diane Honorado, the curriculum specialist for English Language Arts and Social Studies, secondary level, grade 6 through 12. And the reason we need the new textbooks is because we now have new standards. They're very different than the former standards that we use, so we have to use materials that will prepare our students appropriately for the work that they're expected to do. I'm still concerned considering many of our graduates are at elementary levels in reading, writing, and math. So what is these textbooks gonna do to raise up their reading level? These textbooks, will align with the core level of instruction for English language arts. We have other materials and other processes that we go through to help with reading interventions for our secondary students. It's a different process and different materials. These are the materials for all students, and the materials you're referencing are materials for those who have identified as having different needs. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. More public discussion? Uh, can I address one thing? Just very briefly, Ms. Montalbano, the, we have a textbook portable that we set up, and these textbooks were available in that portable for the month of February, as I understand it, uh, for public inspection. The, there was also a multi-person team that evaluated each of the proposed textbook adoption things, graded each one which one met the standards, how, how effectively did it meet it. Uh, some didn't quite meet it. They chose McGraw-Hill because they consistently scored the highest with respect to compliance with all of these uh, standards that were published by the state. So I think with the, it, this is not taken lightly. Uh, this is a team that's worked very hard. Many hours have gone into selection of these textbooks. And uh, I, I, my hat's off to you. I say, well done. You did a Thank good you, job. sir. I stand here with integrity to tell you that this is <laughs> one of the best textbooks that we could have chosen. Right. And looking at the data, it looks like it lines very well. So. Yes, sir. It, it is um, one of the few that is all green on Ed Reports. So we're, we're proud to put that to you as our selection. Okay. Thank, you. Right. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. The, the, the the Come up and state your name. And just, yes, he's yeah. out. I'm just saying, just speaker. Yeah. Okay. Just like, I, it's just a quick question. Yeah. Do you, do you have, is this a hard copy book or is it all? It's it, both. The, both. The students will have a consumable book that they have with every bit of everything they're going to be expected to do in it. Each student and will have one? Each student will have one.
have one for every year for five years. Thank you. This is approved. Thank you. Thank you. We also have complete online compatibility for those students who need virtual. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the whole committee All and the yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of work. Um, board comments? Oh, I'm still going. I didn't realize you still had it. Okay, I got you. Okay. I'm so sorry. I was looking out. 15 8 only. Larry Overfield, CPT. Um, these, excuse me, man, I'm talking. Sorry, <laughs> um, These uh, new standards, are they online? Where'd you go? The new standards, are they online? And are they on the school board website? School board website, the new standards for. They're on the DOE, the Department of Education website. Okay. Okay, all right. The best standard. Best, all right, and um, once the books are adopted and here, we can look at them, right? We can come in and look at them. Thank you. Okay, sorry. So the documents have been available for public review. Um, darn it, she's talking right now. I know, I. We, we did post it and communicate out through our website in January, I believe it was, um, and we set up a curriculum portable where members of the community can come through and literally flip through every page of the books that we're bringing forth. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public discussion? Okay, back to the board for discussion. Do we have a motion? Oh, we do have a motion. We, we have okay. Mr. Brantley and Ms. Soup. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Seems like forever ago, but we yeah. did have one. I just want to say appreciate all the work that um, everyone has done to bring us to this area. So, set up. Okay, that's it. So, Mr. Brantley? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Chair Butch? Yes. 15A, consider approval to award contracts for Lake Placid Middle School, replacing telescoping bleachers to Heritage Products Resources Incorporated, SBHC 2122-37. Make a motion to approve. Second. I'll go with Ms. Howerton on that one. Yeah, so, um, a motion for Ms. Shoup, a second for Ms. Howerton. Public discussion? Back to the board for discussion. I'll just say I had to look up to see what actually telescope bleachers were. But, um, they're just normal yeah, they just, gym bleachers. We can put them back up. Yeah, 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 with a fancy So, name. I hate freaks stay here all the whole night and I get to talk. Um, so, that's the whole bank against the wall as far as when you walk into the left hand side. Mm -hmm. And that's just. 65 seem I hate to say it seems low, but but that's you th what you thought it would come in at or Really that whole side. Yeah. And like everything else you see is there's only one bid Yeah, just to, we're lucky. We got that probably. Yeah, yeah. That's Construction as you know right now, it's just yeah. if you can find a sub to work you put them to work so. mm -hmm. um, More discussion for the board. I had public discussion right already. So Ms. Shoup. Yes. Ms. Howerton. Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. Chair votes yes. Okay. Any emergency items? No, sir. Oh. <laughs> Almost did, but did not. You tried so to get one in. So, legislative issues? I know the session just closed. So. Exciting news about our half cent sales tax. Yes. Yes. <laughs> very thankful very that exciting. that's headed to the governor's office. So very appreciative to Senator Albritton, Senator Broxson board uh, trying to continue to keep this item on everyone's mind and very thankful that uh, I think we're almost to the finish line with it. Yes. Okay. And does everybody understand I guess, with the, the buses to get that approved? Yeah, they got approved, or, um, change, or, change We hope, the the, we got to get signed, but we we're close to this. Yeah. So we're not having budget issues. Sales right. tax to purchase big buses. Yes. Okay, planning and zoning. HCEA, HCESPA, members' comments? They are here. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sherry Verdier, uh, treasurer of the education support staff. Um, I don't know what kind of workshop, I've never been to one of your workshops, but I have sat through a sixth grade IMAD and I have sat through a seventh grade IMAD. Next year I'll get eighth grade whatever. Um, I'm not sure you'll get the same 
if the kids aren't there, the kids are what makes it bad, I feel. You can only make those. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they go around Ridiculous. joking about it afterwards, and I mean, today I had seventh graders trying to color each other's private parts and everything else. It's, you know, the kids are awful <laughs> when it comes to that kind of stuff, so. And that's why I feel smaller environments, more controlled, less, you know, allowing of the outburst that I heard. Girls about. and boys separated, maybe? Yes. Yes. Definitely. So I just, that was my opinion, that it's the kids that make it rough. Thank you. Thank you. School Board Attorney's comments. Well, let's just, let me just say I'm glad to be in Howlands County. I can only imagine how much worse it is in some of the more populated areas. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I would like to. As, as if there's nobody in this board that doesn't know that, but for you sitting out there, this, the uh, sales tax, use of the sales tax to purchase school buses is huge. The counties had that all along. The counties could buy police cars, the counties could buy whatever, but we couldn't use your tax dollar money to buy school buses of all things. That, that's utterly ridiculous. And advertise that we were going to do it. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but <laughs> yeah. we advertised that when we did the half cent sales tax, we were going to buy buses. But the statute didn't allow it again your legislature in action but the, i'm not going to say anything bad about them because they've changed that but i want i want to say if you don't know this you need to know this it would never have happened ever without superintendent longshore's intervention she tirelessly worked with it and i will give you a big hand for that and that's the truth and you know it you, you made she made the right contact she made the right push and she was not ever to be stopped in this so good job um, I really enjoyed the integrity presentation. Uh, you know, as that guy was reading the letter to his boys, I, I, I tell you, that was very emotional to me. Was. That was. Uh, she taught him a soldier, but he wasn't. He was a Marine. <laughs> Let's be clear about that. <laughs> be very clear about that, you know. So uh, the only other thing I would point out to the board is, uh, in addition, of course, to all the workshop stuff we have coming, is I am uh, going to be on a Viking cruise, I'm pleased to oh, say, you taking right. my lovely bride on a, we're going to over to Europe. I'm not going to tell you where we're going and everything because you might find me then. <laughs> but uh, we're gone April 12th to the 22nd. So that means I'm going to miss the 19th meeting. Um, I just realized my wife had mentioned since we have to be there three hours ahead of the international flight, that maybe leaving April 11th in the evening. But we'll talk about that later. We can, yeah. We're going to go do what we have to do. Yes, so, uh, I, I, I may have difficulty finding another attorney to sit in for me on the 19th because that is a Tuesday evening when most school boards meet and it's very difficult to get uh, another school board attorney because they're not going to leave their board meeting to come to our board meeting. Uh, but but I'll, I will make every effort I can to get somebody to sit in. I'll work on that this week. If I can find somebody okay, if I can't. Uh, Perhaps if you'd like, I'll ask Mr. Lobozo if he'd mind sitting in. He's, he's got knowledge of school board law. And, and uh, you know, I, hopefully there won't be a lot of major things going on that night. Uh, but um, I just wanted to make sure you're okay with that. Okay. Not with, okay with my leaving. You shouldn't be okay with that. <laughs> but, 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 I, but I have to do this. I hope you realize that. Thank you. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Mrs. Howerton? Um, just ditto on what Mr. McClure was saying about Lake Placid High School. That was I'm very touched by that. Um, and just want to say thank you to everyone who's been coming to our meetings and hope that you continue, even though you've got some strong passions about what you've come and spoke to us about. But I do in, in appreciate you coming and voicing your concerns. Thank you. Mr. Brantley? No, nope. talked enough. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Sue? Um, yeah, just. You know, on the Lake Placid um, High School, I thought that was very good. And um, just want to say, Mr. Clur, have a very, very nice trip. Thank you very much. I hope that that we have every just, plan to do so. I'm sure you do, no doubt in my mind. Um, and then, like Ms. Howard just said, thank you all so much for being here. The, you know, despite how we may or may not agree, um, 
but you're here and you're voicing your opinion and that's it's someone said earlier we're we live in america and that's what we do so thank you all so much for being here and voicing your opinion we really appreciate it Again, just thank you. I'm perfectly comfortable having everybody come and talk, and I think it's wonderful. I think we've had a great, um, really an awesome opportunity for people to speak and talk about what it takes a lot of courage to get up here and speak, no doubt about it. So I appreciate everybody's uh, making their voice known, and there's nothing wrong with that, and I really appreciate that, and I, this whole board does too. So, um, And with that, I will just call this meeting adjourned.